Welcome to the Fashionista Life Podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer Johnson. If you find yourself here, it may mean that you're looking for courage, clarity, or confidence in some part of your life. I interview experts in business, fashion, and life each week and share strategies for success, motivation, and mindset. If you want to learn more about the Fashionista Life and how it can help you grow your business as an extension of yourself and help transform you into a confident entrepreneur, check out my website, thefashionistalife.com, or join my private Facebook group at Clear Confident Female Entrepreneur. Now let's get started. Today, we welcome into the studio, Tracy Duhaney. Tracy is the principal cons uh, consultant and founder for the, is it Ambicelli? It is Ambicelli. Ambicelli Group, which is a boutique business and leadership consulting firm located in Naples, Florida. The company is primarily focused on strategic planning, culture, and leadership development for today's workplace for small to medium-sized businesses. And over the past 10 years, Tracy has been proactively involved in reviewing organizational practices and improving business strategy and transforming company culture through awareness and training. Wow. And your mantra is rooted in live authentically and watch the magic of life unfold. Yes. Where'd you come up with that? That's you know, cool. It, it's <clears throat> just, I, I think life is magical. It doesn't mean that life doesn't have its ups and downs, but just the fact that we're alive it is absolutely magical. And being able to see all the glory around us, absolutely beautiful. And I found that when you live authentically, life is even more beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that's where that came from. And it's a reminder to myself to just be yourself. The world will adjust mm -hmm. instead of trying to mold myself into someone else's definition of me. That's fabulous. Yes. And when you can live that way and every day is a blessing, like you said, you can see clearly. Yes. yes. And things aren't as heavy of a, of a load. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Which kind of goes into our topic today. Joy is in the journey. What, where did that come from? How do you use it every day? How do you impart that on the people that you work with? Like, you know, I want to get into what you do as well. Absolutely. But, but what is that all about? So joy is in the journey was more of a focal point for me. As I started my entrepreneurship journey years ago, I recognized that I got caught up in the goals and everything that I had to do while I was still in the rat race of corporate America. Mm -hmm. You always were striving for the next big thing, the next best thing, the next goal. And the more you focus on that, you would blink. And then all of a sudden, time has passed. Mm -hmm. And you look back and say, even now you look, you say, how are we so far in the year? How are we in this, in this mm -hmm. moment where, where did time go? We all say that. We all say <laughs> that. Like, how did this happen? And at this point I realized I needed to focus more on today. I live with a lot of anxiety and it's always because anxiety is focused on the future. And what's left to come? What haven't I done? What's going to mm -hmm. happen? But when you focus on the journey, the moment you're in, it kind of stops that cycle a little bit. It's not ever stopping because anxiety is, is an ongoing thing. But if I can focus on today and this utter moment that I'm in, for example, I'm talking to you mm -hmm. at this moment. I'm focused on this. I'm not focused on everything else that has to happen for this day or this week or this month. I'm just focused on enjoying this moment right here with you. And then it brings the focus for what I'm doing and appreciation for who I am in this moment and what I've accomplished. That's where it came from. And I choose to focus on that every day because there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. There and sure is. Life will escape us if we don't. Mm -hmm. Have you read the, the um, I'm trying to remember the Don Miguel Ruiz. No. His, uh, it, his, the name of the author is Don Miguel Ruiz, the five agreements, four, agree no, it's the four the agreements. Four agreements. I've heard of it. And it's about around this topic mm -hmm. of living in the moment mm -hmm. because otherwise you do let life pass you by. But I like what you said, you know, dealing with anxiety. If you're only dealing with what's happening right now and your mind isn't over here thinking, oh, after this, I have a meeting, then I have to go to the grocery store, then I have to, you know, your et cetera, whole litany, et <laughs> right? Because that's what gets you amped up. Right. That's what gets you, oh. Oh my gosh. You know, and there's then, always one more thing to be added. Right. Or, and there always will be, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But because you're not doing that, you're focusing on the person mm -hmm. that's in front of you. Yes. The conversation that's in front of you. And it's slowing time down a little bit, would you say? 
I would, I would, it, it definitely slows it down to the moment. And I find that I have more, more memorable experiences that way because I can connect back to where I was in that moment and be able to recall it and have different conversations versus what happened last week. Mm-hmm. How many times do we say, I have no idea what I did yesterday right. because we're always on the go, go, go. So when someone says, what now, if someone said to me, what were you doing on Thursday? At so-and-so time, <laughs> I will look at you like deer in the headlights. I have no idea. You were at Starbucks. But I was a Starbucks. You were at Starbucks. <laughs> But, you know, I was more of what were you doing when you felt this? Oh, I can tell you because I created a memory Mm, with that. That's a good takeaway. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not in the moment, how can you? Exactly. Exactly. So how did that play into part? You own your own business. Yes. How how do you use this in your day to day business? And how did that have a part in your business or has a part in your business? So I use this in my business when I'm speaking with clients. I'm giving them my utmost attention for that very moment. That conversation is priority to me. And that way they feel that they're just not another checklist on on my list. They have my attention, but also a case of the journey of entrepreneurship itself is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I have to remind myself of that every single day because you know, there are ups and downs, (laughs) there are lefts, there are rights, there's all the way around and life happens Mm -hmm. and things are thrown at you nonstop personally and professionally within your business. And I have to remind myself, what is this moment trying to teach me, show me, or make me realize? Oh, I have to write this down. What is this moment trying to teach me, Mm -hmm. show me, Mm -hmm. or make me realize? All right. And it's a, it's a very big statement when you start to think, what is this moment trying to teach me? Because there's a lesson in all of it. Some lessons, just like when we were kids, we don't want to learn, (laughs) but there's a lesson in all of it. And if it's not trying to teach me the immediate lesson, what is it showing me as Mm -hmm. part of that? And when you really break that down, now the answers aren't always there, but when you're trying to break that down, you realize, let me appreciate this moment. All of the curveballs that come Mm -hmm. my way, anyone's way. Life is full of curveballs. We're always dodging. And when you recognize, maybe life is also telling you, slow down. Right. Take it one step at a time. And smell those proverbial frozen. Exactly. Is everyone exactly. telling us to smell? Or listen and smell the, <clears throat> smell the coffee that's calling you. <laughs> you know, I, I, I look at that and, you know, when I've worked with my clients, I've always said the life of an entrepreneur is never a straight line. Correct. There, you know, it's a curve. It's a wave. It's, it's ups and downs, hills and valleys all the time. Mm-hmm. And this is a beautiful way to rein that in and try to get some sort of control over Absolutely. Your emotions and what's happening. Absolutely. And that speaks to what I work with a lot of my clients on. And it's that emotional awareness of what is, what am I actually feeling in this moment? Mm -hmm. It's not what I think I'm feeling or what is thrown at me, my gut reaction, but what is this moment and why am I feeling that? What is it that is affecting me to feel this way before I respond? You know, when we, we mm-hmm. they say don't respond to an email when you're angry, uh-huh, right? you type it. <laughs> <laughs> don't send it. And don't send it, but just type it and then let it out and say, okay, what was I really upset about? Mm-hmm. What was this moment teaching me? What was that person really trying to say? Do your questions that you asked, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I do that routinely because at the end of the day, if I don't, I'm just like everyone else. And we can be very reactive. Mm-hmm. But my goal for a lot of things is let me be proactive as much as I can. And I can proactively regulate my emotion before I respond to you. That's great. I just love your three questions. <laughs> now, I know you say take a, take a deep breath and or take a deep look at the beauty of enjoying every moment and finding joy where you are instead of solely focusing on the destination, which is basically what we've been talking about suggesting this in our businesses because you come from a space of you help people strategically plan, Mm -hmm. right? So important, would you say? It is important. You know, when you do strategic planning or any kind of planning, you have the ultimate goal in, in mind and you know what you're working towards. But just like anything else, you have steps to accomplish that goal. And it's recognizing each step is its own mini goal, but also its own valuable place. And I've accomplished it. I love to use the analogy of, you know, if we have our goal of those 20 pounds that we want to lose, we don't, we focus on that ultimate goal. But once you hit the first pound down, you're still celebrating. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, I'm in the moment. I did it. 
I'm nowhere near my goal, but I'm still here and I, I accomplished it. I celebrate it. And each step along the way. And then at the end, you look back and say, wow, that journey was hard. Mm -hmm. But I love who I, who I became through it, what I learned about myself through it. But I was in the moment, not just focusing on the ultimate goal at the end. And I use that in my business where we all have a million goals mm -hmm. for ourselves and our business. A lot of them are really big and, and they're still <laughs> feasible, but they're really out there. Or at least I hope we do. Right. And it's, we can get caught up in how am I going to get there or comparing ourselves to other people who are oh, already there. And that's such a trap, isn't it? It is. It is. And you, I always have to regulate myself and say, that person, that's just one day in their life. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the rest of it looks like, but here's one day in my life. And I like, I like what I see and I like what the rest of it looks like. So I use that in my business and when I'm working with my clients, because it's a realignment of what we need to focus on. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Is your closet overflowing? Or maybe your kids' closets are as well. Or maybe you want to just redecorate your house. If you're wondering what to do with all that stuff that you've accumulated, bring it all to True Fashionistas or even ship it to them for free. All you have to do is sit back and collect your money. You can reach out to them online at truefashionistas.com, come into the store or check them out on Facebook or Instagram, and that's truefashionistas.com. Welcome back, my friends. We are in studio with Tracy Duhaney, and we are talking about the joy in the journey. And you had three things, you know, three questions. What is this trying to teach me? What is this trying to show me? And what is this trying to make me realize? Did I get those right? Yes. I love that. To ask yourself. In any moment. In any moment. If you were to pick out three tips for people, okay, three tips and how to find joy in the journey, what, what would you tell them? I would say take stock in where you are today. And I start with that because you don't know how you've grown or where you're going if you don't know where you're starting from. That's a proverbial for anything. If you don't know where you're starting from you don't know where, and you don't know where you're going, how do you know you got there? Mm -hmm. So take stock in where you are today. And when you really realize who you are, where you are, what you're doing, why you're doing it. It's a very beautiful process mm -hmm. if you're honest with yourself. And it's a hard process as well, but it's very beautiful. And that can be in business. It can be personally. It can be as you're starting a business or just growing within your career. What is it about you, A, that you love so much and how are you growing that, right? And Tying that into, I think a lot of people go through this motion of imposter syndrome. We all do. We all do. And it, it's, it can come on just in the middle of anything, exactly. right? Exactly. And then you have to stop and say, wait, no, I can do this. I have been doing it. Mm -hmm. I will do it. And I will continue to do it. And when you do that because you recognize who you are and what you are, it makes it a lot easier for that joy in the journey because you recenter and realign yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and that's one of the things that I love doing for myself. I've spent a lot of time working on myself, doing the self, you know, those self improvement aisles. And oh my and gosh. <laughs> can I find you in those too? You Cause I'm always in there. <laughs> and years ago it used to be taboo. Like you don't see anyone in those, in those aisles. And now I love it. <laughs> Because I will be going and they know me in Barnes and Noble saying, oh, what are you looking for? I'm like, this book, you know, and now with that, I tie in, tied it together. What am I learning about myself while I'm reading this book? What am I learning about myself as I did? Why did I choose this book? Mm -hmm. I asked myself a lot of questions. But you know what? I, I, and actually, I think you and I were at something. We were at a Toastmasters meeting. And one of the questions was something about asking questions. Yes, it was. Do you continuously ask questions or do you just assume? Right. That was a question. And it's such a fascinating question because it can be used in any realm, any situation. And at the end of it all, I ask myself a lot of questions. I look like a crazy person just talking to myself, but you know, there, there's the meme that <laughs> Are says- Are you talking to yourself in the aisles of Barnes and Noble? I am, but when you have the, the memes that say, I'm not talking to myself, I'm having a board meeting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one of those. But, you know, I ask myself a lot of questions and it's usually rooted in why. Mm-hmm tying into Simon Sinek, Start With Why. Right, exactly. That's one of my favorite books. I have not read that book. Can you believe that? You know, it's interesting. I've read the book. I can tell you the first time I read it, I was so confused. 
because I had no idea what I just read, <laughs> but I wasn't in the right mind space mm-hmm. to read it. You have to be, how many times do you read something and it doesn't click until the fifth no. time because you are ready to receive that information. Right. And what I love about that book and starting with why personally is my foundational principles and my values. Mm -hmm. Who am I? What am I looking to do? What am I looking to be? And with that, that's my guiding force, right? So when you tie it all together with who am I in this moment? What are my foundational principles? Where am I going? What is my goal? How do I get there in between? That's the basis of of planning Mm -hmm. or strategic planning. It's having your different targets in mind. Mm -hmm. And that's how I tie it into my business when it's a joy in the journey. The whole thing is a journey. And I look at where I am today, where I'm going, and then what the steps are in between. So that was one. Did we get to three or I don't remember? That, well, I, that was. It was, was starting where you want is one. And then the, <laughs> the goal is two. And then the following the journey is three is how I would tie it all together because it is a three-step process. Right. Absolutely. And and you can use that in your business. You can use it in your life. You can. You know, I... Right? Like... You can, I look at it that it's inter- intermingled, mm-hmm. so to speak, because who I am personally is also who I am professionally. That's part of that living authentically. Mm-hmm. And it is not the customer service voice when you answer the phone versus hi, the, hi. <laughs> <laughs> but which we all have, but it's still tying into who I am personally is authentic and who I am professionally is authentic. And let me start there. And I have my same foundational principles across the board. And this is my starting, this is my starting place. And then my goals may change, but everything needs to be rooted in that. You know, I just had a fleeting thought here for a moment. So we were talking about, uh, I I said, well, can't you, this can be part of your Mm -hmm. life. And you're like, you know, it's all commingled. Mm -hmm. So having a personal brand, like you have a personal brand, it's your business. I have a personal brand. (laughs) Showing up authentically and, and all of that, you know, we talk about how, how do we, how do we, I, I just, how do we put that together? I'm, I'm at a loss for words right now, but, <laughs> but basically do we show up as our brand or do we show up as our person? Because our brand is our person. Does that make sense? It does. You know, I personally, I show up as me, which is my brand and me as a mm-hmm. person, because again, it's rooted in my authentic self. I, years ago, I used to find that I, whenever I was going somewhere, my brand became professional, completely eloquent. I had to act a certain way, be a certain way. I was tired. I was so tired. I got tired of being tired, Mm -hmm. living this facade of who I'm portraying in public. And then when I got home, I was like, just letting it off, just okay, I can be myself now. That that is not how I want to carry my life. That is not how I want to be. I want to show up and say, this is me. If I'm feeling loud and very extroverted today, you're going to get it. If I feel very quiet, you're going to get it Mm -hmm. because that's how I am being today. Now, if I'm rude, then that's, if that's, if I'm rude to you, then that's usually out of character. Mm -hmm. And then I have to go back and apologize and self-analyze and say, what made me be that way? And then really take stock of me Mm -hmm. and then how I address that. But overall, I, my brand is the same as my person because it's rooted in that authenticity that I, I really believe in. And I love you said that because it, I, it comes out of a place of, I, I've been following a few people, um, not local people, but mm-hmm. national people, and they have a couple different brands and they show up one way on one, uh, let's call it a channel. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, for whatever right. else to call it. One way in this business and another way in this business. And it's mixed messages Mm -hmm. because you're like, who are you? What are you supposed to be? Who am I supposed to believe? That's tough for an audience or a a customer or a client to get behind. Because if you can't be real with me, then what do we have here? What's interesting with that is that they show up one way in one brand, the other way in the other brand. I wonder how they are in private. Is that the third person? So it comes back to... I'm sure they're even confused (laughs) as to (laughs) who am I? And I think that's why it comes back to that number one is who am I Mm -hmm. and what am I starting with? Because that was very important to me to take time to recognize who am I? Because we evolve. I'm not the same person I was a year ago, you know, and in a good way. I right. Evolve. And you should. You should. Exactly. Right? It's exactly. healthy. And continuously taking stock of who that is today and 
being okay with the person that you are today. And if you're not, there's a lot of self-development work Mm -hmm. you can do. But outside of that, it's who am I today and where am I going? So for those people that Mm -hmm. are, unless they're actors, in which case it's a character you're playing. Right. But if it's truly you, then there's there's conflict. And Mm -hmm. how many times do we see that in business? We do. And we do. That's why I'm, I'm making that point because it's, it, it, if you, you have to know who you are at the end of the day, because, Absolutely. you know, we all have met those people mm-hmm. that you, you meet them and they're, they're fakey, fakey. Oh, hi. Oh, how are you? And they act like they're totally invested in you and care about you. Yes. And then behind the scenes, they're totally not that way. And they maybe don't like you or whatever. And, but going back to your being tired point, yes. when you have to fake it, that much? How exhausting. It is. And it's one of those key things that when I'm working with clients, I talk to or talk with them about because from a leadership perspective, and we're all leaders, I Mm -hmm. firmly believe that we all have influence in other people. And from a leadership perspective in an organization, if you are having dual personalities and your staff does not know which version of you they're going to get today. Right. They're walking in eggshells and that leads to a toxic culture. Mm -hmm. And through that toxic culture, the proverbial cycle of, well, I'm an employee today. I'm going through, I love this company. Nope. Starting to not like it. No, my manager Mm -hmm. sucks. I, all, all the things we hear. And then you lose that staff member. And then the leader comes back and says, I wonder why we lost them. Yeah. What happened? Because we didn't know who we were getting today. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And it leads to a lack of trust. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing that I find with organizations and dynamics in leadership is that there's a lack of trust because people aren't being authentic. Mm -hmm. And that goes for both sides, the leader Mm -hmm. and the employee. If you're rooted in authenticity, then it comes back to saying, I know who I am. I know who you are. We're working together towards the same goal. Wow, we've unpacked a lot. Like, we, yes. <laughs> wow, we could continue this and go deeper. I know we could. I so much appreciate you being on here today, Tracy. If our listeners would like to get a hold of you, how can they do so? The website is the www.theambacellegroup.com. My social media handles for personally are Tracy and Duhaney on Instagram. My favorite place in the world is LinkedIn. So oh, I love find, you on there. <laughs> you'll find me on LinkedIn, Tracy Duhaney, MSC on LinkedIn, because I love connecting with different people in the professional world. Because again, it's it doesn't blur the line that this is professional versus Facebook right. is personal. Mm-hmm. I am my authentic self on both. On both, And for the company, it's the Ambicelli Group across all platforms. Fabulous. Thank you so much for being on with us today. And thank you to all of my friends for joining me here today and every week here on The Fashionista Life, brought to you by True Fashionistas. If you want a deeper dive, head to my website, thefashionistalife.com, to sign up for my emails where you can take a deeper dive each week into topics for you and your small business. Have a fabulous day.